What is up guys? We are back with another video and today we're taking a look at basically this big hunk of metal right here. This is Noctua's NHP1 and it's their first ever passive CPU cooler. So it's just one big heat sink designed for passive cooling. So no fans on this cooler whatsoever. We're gonna see how it does against other coolers out there and if it can keep up with the latest CPUs. So let's go ahead and take a look. Taking a first look at the cooler, one thing is for sure, this is a very large CPU cooler. I'll go ahead and put the dimensions sort of like right here. And you're definitely gonna wanna look at these dimensions to make sure this cooler will fit in your case. Being that this is a 100% passive cooler, we have no fans whatsoever. And this made it so Noctua designed this cooler a little bit differently than your typical heatsink. With a normal heatsink, we have very thin heatsink fins that are stacked very close together. With this, we don't have that, we have thick fins. So they're actually 1.5 millimeters thick and there's 13 of them and they're spaced out to allow airflow to kind of go through them. Also, we actually have holes in each heatsink fin that allows more air to come through as well. Coming up from the base of the cooler, we have six six millimeter thick nickel plated copper heat pipes. Now these heat pipes come up from the base and go into the heatsink, of course, taking that heat from your CPU and bringing it up into the heatsink itself. If we flip the cooler over to take a look at the base, one thing you notice is that it is offset from the center. This ensures that you have 100% RAM compatibility on your motherboard so you won't block you know, your memory slots. Now taking a look at the base, it is a thick nickel plated copper base and it actually has one of the best finishes that I've ever seen on a CPU cooler before. When it comes to installation, we're gonna be installing this cooler on an Intel Z490 motherboard. So this installation should be pretty much the same across LGA 1200, 1155, 1151, and 1150 sockets. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take the backplate and carefully place it through the back of your motherboard using the holes around your CPU socket. Next, install the black spacers and then the mounting bars on top of them, securing them with the included thumb screws. Depending on the orientation you want your cooler, you can either install the mounting bars on the top and bottom or the sides of the CPU socket. Apply the included thermal paste and then carefully place the cooler on top of your CPU, lining up the screws with the threads on the mounting bars. With the included screwdriver, secure the cooler. It was a little interesting that Noctua went with a sort of Torx bolt instead of a normal screw on the mounting system, but at least they included the screwdriver. Installation of this cooler could not have been easier. Super simple, especially if you're doing it outside of your case, but we did run into an issue when we went to put it back in here. The actual heat pipes um, on the back here, they were actually rubbing against our fan, so our fan wouldn't actually spin up. So we installed the fan on the outside of the case, of course, for testing purposes, but it's definitely something you're gonna wanna keep in mind with this cooler. Look at the specifications of the cooler, the dimensions, and make sure it's gonna fit you know, within your case. Now this is the Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX. It is a more compact mid tower, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, you just wanna make sure that you're not gonna run into any clearance issues with fans, either on the top or on the rear of your case. Now here are the specs of our test system, which we've tested a bunch of new CPU coolers on lately. Our idle test is taken on the Windows 10 desktop, just idling for one hour. And as you can see, this cooler with no fans does a really good job and it's kind of expected because we're not putting any load on our CPU whatsoever. Our first load test is using the A to 64 system stability test with just the CPU selected. And as you can see, this cooler does the worst out of our test group, but it's honestly not that bad. Remember, no fans on this cooler and it's only five degrees warmer than you know coolers that have dual tower dual fans all that kind of stuff it's actually pretty impressive our second load test is using again the a to 64 system stability test but we enable both the cpu and fpu and i honestly was expecting this cooler to just you know we were going to get thermal throttling and all that 
but it definitely held up. You know, running at 77 degrees Celsius under full load with no fans is extremely impressive to me. Um, again, I thought we were gonna thermally throttle and it just didn't happen. And it held that 77 degrees throughout our entire test. At the end of the day, I'm actually really impressed with this cooler. You know, I was expecting it to do great under idle conditions, even minor load conditions, it would do good. But I really expected it to fail under our load two test, which puts a ton of load on the CPU. And it didn't, we didn't get any thermal throttling. We were definitely within spec of our cooler or of our CPU. And there's no fans on this, which is really, really impressive. And it's really cool to see Noctua come out with a product like this. Now, is this cooler for everybody? I would say no, because it's gonna give you about the same type of performance as like a, you know, kind of low end, single tower, single fan cooler. But you with this, you have no fans. Um, you definitely wanna make sure you have a case that supports it. But if you're looking for a very quiet solution, this definitely can be it. Now, if you're looking for the best of the best, the highest, you know, end air cooler, this is not it, obviously. Um, you know, you can look at Noctua's line of other great, you know, coolers. They have some of the best air coolers out there. But if you are looking for something with no fans, you want everything to be super quiet, um, this definitely can be the cooler for you. Because it is all metal and we have so much metal here, it is an expensive cooler. It's selling for $109.90 um, on Amazon right now, which is, you know, puts it up there with like an 120 millimeter AIO, as well as Noctua's own super high-end air cooler. So it all comes down to use case. But I think for a passive cooler, and we've seen passive coolers in the past, um, the ones in the past, again, they were great for idling and they were great for small little tasks, but if you were doing anything intensive, those coolers couldn't keep up. And again, we would see thermal throttling or our system just shut down. Here, you don't have that. So I think that is really impressive. Now, if you have any questions about this cooler, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.